Hey everyone, I just wanted to give a quick tutorial of how I install my Xtool D1 adjustable Z-axis extension. Um, for those who have bought either the <clears throat> STL file or have bought the actual um, finished product, uh, I just want to say a big thank you to those um, who have. Um, but yeah, let's get started and I'll show you how I install it to my Xtool D1 laser engraver. As you can see, I already have my X-Tool D1 laser engraver on the two riser extensions. So here's the actual uh, finished product. Um, as you can see, I have a M3 by 20 millimeters long <clears throat> screw in the side. I also have the same screws in the bottom holding on the base plate. And then in the back, we have a about five and a half inch long, um, I think it's a 5 16 by 18. Uh, bolt and then we have the same nut we, we, we put a nut inside for it to screw up and down um, so if you, you want to make sure that this nut is uh, fairly small <coughs> uh, and thin as you can see it is here um, if you're in a country that uses metric uh, you're going to want a bolt that's about 15 mil about 14 or 15 millimeters long um, a bolt, not bolty. The nut should be about, you know, about 5.7 meters, uh, millimeters uh, thick. And it's about 11.82. So those are the that is for those who have uh, the STL file and need to print out um, something that's in uh, a metric using country. Uh, I am in the US, so we do use <laughs> inches. Also, uh, in the STL file and in the, and what's included in the uh, finished product is this little uh, spindle here. Um, you can actually pop it off. And you can use a drill to uh, a drill and socket to spin it up quicker, which is what I usually kind of do. And then I just kind of pop this on here for some fine tuning. And then we have a little cap, a uh, little bomb cap, just to kind of protect your uh, laser head so it doesn't get scratched. If you bought the STL file, um, I also recommend definitely getting a uh, tap. Uh, this is a M uh, M3 tap. Uh, and so you tap the tap the holes here and here, so you can put the uh, screws in. Uh, for the base plate, I also recommend uh, just drilling out a little bit. You can tap, you can put the screws through and tap it like that. Um, although you'll probably get some plastic buildup, uh, so I definitely recommend don't drill. <laughs> through the extension because it's drilled the, uh, the holes um, yeah, just works better uh, <laughs> this drill this drill bit um, it is a I think of a eighth inch or what is that in, so about you know, a little over three millimeters And last but not least, you'll need a screwdriver, or you can use a drill, um, but let's just use a screwdriver for now. And last but not least, almost forgot, uh, the laser uh, the laser cover fan, is the original cover actually interferes with the back of the uh, Z-axis uh, extension. So a new cover uh, is also provided um, in the STL file. There's uh, one for uh, like a hose if you have the style of uh, air assist I have that's here, or if you have the Kobe Schmidt one, or if X tool will be over here, uh, hose guide, or if you have no air assist, you, there's also a no a no ho like hose guide cover fan or fan. Guard. All right, so let's get started, and we'll start by removing the fan guard. All right. 
All right, so now that we have the fan guard off, um, you can also take the laser off. Slide it up. And so if you bought the the Z-axis extension, uh, the final product, uh, we'll need to take these off for the base plate uh, holder. So now that we have it off, we just slide it on like this. So, um, I also recommend putting your <clears throat> uh, putting your cable harness, doing like bending it to a 90 degree angle, but bend it gently. Don't want to kink any of the cables, but I recommend putting it behind it, like that, okay, so let's just leave it up here for now, um, as you can see I have this air assist, uh, we will need to turn it a little bit, and then we'll put the base plate back on, the base plate is, uh, I can only fit on one way, um, so the holes only match up really one, only one way, and we'll just put it back on. So you want to tighten it where it feels snug, but not too tight because you don't want to, um, you know, crack the plastic. It's just this plastic in here. You don't want to crack it, but just tighten it so it's a very light, you know, fitting snug. Um, shouldn't be any play with this base plate. All right, there we go. Uh, and then we can drop the laser to the base plate. And then we'll screw in this. Just the same thing as the as the bottom. We want to screw in just where it's kind of snug. You'll feel the laser kind of push out a little bit, and there's just no play. You, know, you see no play in the laser. All right. Let's spin this up a little bit. The uh, sorry, let's spin up the adjustment height a little bit. Just gonna give it a little bit uh, room to work with. Uh, make sure that you know your knob is uh, loose so you can fit the laser on, and you'll fit it over uh, the guide or whatever to fit it over, just like you do your your um, your laser head. Uh, I'm just gonna spin it down a little bit more, but yeah, we're good. Um, so as you can see, um, you can spin it up and down. Um, See, I can get a little video of this more. But yeah, you can see you spin it up and down. It goes, it goes up and down pretty nice and easy. Um, I find this to work really good uh, if you're trying to fine tune um, where you are trying to focus your laser in, especially on uh, if you're cutting. Um, a lot of times I like to, you know have my focus a little bit lower than the top, um, just so it, it, I feel, you know, the wood cuts better um, when it's a little bit closer to the wood. But yeah, you can see it just adjusts up and down. Um, and if you want to use a, uh, a drill, uh, it would go even quicker, uh, which is a lot of times what I do. So yeah, once you find the position, your focused uh, position, uh, you're good. And, uh, Screw it in just like you normally would uh, with the OEM screw, and you're good. You can, as you can see, there's really no play. Um, you know, it's just it's on there. So now we'll take our fan cover uh, and put it on. As I said, I would recommend putting your wire harness uh, to the right outside of the laser head. And with your harness uh, to the right, outside of your laser, um, I find that the harness will never get caught on anything. Uh, it just, you, know, you can move it up and down, left to right, it just doesn't get caught. Uh, I know sometimes people have it up here. Um, you know, if you have it here, it's not going anywhere. It, it gets stuck. Uh, it just, I mean, obviously you have a little to the right, so you lose a little bit more room, but 
we'll put it here. As you can see, you get stuck. Um, you're gonna wanna put it, like I said, just snug it in right there. And then put your fan cover over. All right, um, another thing I'd recommend, I'm not sure if you 100% need this, um, I did cut off uh, both zip ties, uh, so it's just more free floating. Um, you might be able to get away with it uh, if you kind of, I mean, probably should be fine. But, you know, as you can see, I have it totally uh, to the right side. As you, maybe you can see it. <laughs> Um, it's always to the right side. Should be able to have it still cl clipped in. Um, I, when I was doing my testing, I just, uh, I did take it off, but yeah, you should be able to have both zip ties, but um, in case your cable harness for whatever, whatever reason is a little bit on the shorter side, just, you know, you can unclip those and it shouldn't get in the way of any. But yeah, you're all good. Um, if you have the air assist, you know, just, Put it through the hole, connect it to your nozzle, and you're good to go. So, all right, guys, uh, that's it. I um, hope you enjoyed, and hope you enjoy your uh, new Z axis. Um, if you have any questions, just let me know. Um, if you have any feedback or any comments, um, just let me know. Uh, I'm here to help, and uh, till next time.